Great music today. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Thank you. Wow. imagine Everybody what a good choice for what's for breakfast. I, uh, saw, I This was from a, a little cartoon I saw, Winnie the Pooh, waking up in the morning, frame number one. What's for, I wonder what's for breakfast. <laughs> frame number two, he opens up the cabinet and it's all honey. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love that. I love that. And, and, and talking about imagination, and uh, I remember vaguely being read the Winnie the Pooh stories when I was a kid, but I've recently revisited them. And wow, they're just, they're just marvelous. So I kind of let Winnie the Pooh and all of his friends inspire me this month for this month's talk. So Winnie the Pooh and what's for breakfast. And it comes from a conversation too, as I listen to the, the overall story, uh, there was a conversation between uh, Piglet and Winnie the Pooh. This is where this comes from. Piglet says, when you wake up in the morning, Pooh, what's the first thing you say to yourself? And Pooh says, of course, what's for breakfast? What do you say, Piglet? And Piglet says, I say, I wonder what's going to happen exciting today. And Pooh thoughtfully says, I think it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the stories, I invite you to revisit these stories. They are so full of deep and lovely humor and wisdom. And, um, and, and, and as, as I was studying it a little bit, I was trying to forget, A.A. Milne, what does that stand for, A.A. Milne? Did anybody know? Alan Alexander Milne, that's the guy who wrote the stories. And Winnie the Pooh was one of those things, it's like the Fonz was for Henry Winkler. Henry Winkler. I mean, Milne was a very successful playwright in Britain and a poet and had, had a really good career. And then when his son, Christopher Robin, was born, he wrote these stories for his son and boom, it just blew everything up. And nobody knows him anything more about his plays or his poems. And he could even sell a play after that. People were just like, can you write another poo book? Uh. And then his son, of course, hated him because he took his whole life and, ma and made a story out of it. And so everywhere he went, he was always, Christopher was always asked about his toys. And the stories come from his toys. You know this, right? That, that Winnie the Pooh was actually his bear that he had as a kid, and the other one was Piglet was also one of the toys. Eeyore was one of the toys. Tigger was one of the toys. Uh, Kanga, the kangaroo, was one of the toys, and also Roo, the little baby kangaroo. He had those as his little toys. Two of the characters in most of the stories, though, not. The owl. He didn't have an owl. Didn't have an owl. And rabbit. Didn't have a rabbit toy but he had all the others. And as I've listened to them, it's really interesting to see how they all play a part of our own sense of imagination, our own sense of purpose, our own personalities with Pooh, with his wonder and his thought about not having a very big brain, but, uh, very, but you know, he was super smart as we know. And Piglet, per both joy and a little fear. You know, Piglet was afraid of things, but he, he brought joy to just about everything he did. And of course, Eeyore. Oh, I don't know, it might rain today, but then again, there are no clouds in the sky, so how could it rain? I wish it would rain, but then I don't want to lose the sun. You know, <laughs> he says, doom and gloom, he can't make up his mind. And, and Tigger, you know, just this mischievous little character bouncing around, full of optimism, you know? And Kanga, the mother energy. And also, Kanga filled with intelligence and, and, and a different kind of wisdom from the owl. The owl had wisdom, but he was kind of absent-minded about it. And, and then Rabbit was very fussy, well-meaning, but very fussy. So they all had a little bit to do with who we are and what we're all about. And as a result of that idea, I'm thinking that those characters and how they live through their lives in the stories uh, kind of informed the kind of story experience they had in the stories. And our character and how we live our lives is influenced also by who we are and what we are and how we live our life and how we think about things. In fact, Dr. Holmes talks about that in uh, the Science of Mind textbook where he says, man's experience, woman's experience, person's experience, I did not degenderify his language today. Man's experience is the logical outcome of his inner vision and his horizon is limited to the confines of his own consciousness. To the confines of his own consciousness. Well, that's what limits our horizon. That's what limits how far we can see. It's that inner vision that shapes the story. 
But that, that consciousness is what's going to allow us to have an expanded story, to have the kind of experience that the Hundred Acre Woods gives. And I think of of the Hundred Acre Wood where they lived, it's kind of like the universal presence itself. It's all the possibilities that could possibly happen for everybody. Think about that, confines of your own consciousness. Uh, one of the other conversations between Pooh Bear and Piglet is uh, 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 the bear saying, uh, Pooh winning, saying, uh, uh, what, what, what day is it today? And Piglet saying, it's Tuesday. And Pooh Bear saying, oh wow, that's my favorite day. <laughs> but every day was his favorite day. Every day was his favorite day because he chose it. And that's what is behind so much of the stories of Winnie the Pooh, and that's what's behind so much of the, the information, the teaching of Science of Mind, that we are at choice, that it teaches us about choice, that we cannot live a choiceless life. It's absolutely impossible. We are always here to choose at every day, every second, every moment of our life is an opportunity for choice. And that's a good thing, and maybe not so good thing sometimes but it is a good thing in that we get to change the choices that we make when we find that life is not f functioning in the desired way that we might want. In uh, one of Dr. Holmes' little skinny books, The Ten Basic Ideas of the Science of Mind, how he narrowed it down to 10, I'll never know. He just picked 10 that would be his favorite for that day, perhaps. Maybe he wrote it on Tuesday, who knows? <laughs> But anyway, he says, you are free to choose. You are free to choose, but you have to take the consequences of that choosing. You must take the consequences of that choosing. Go back to the stories. Tigger, the story where they introduce Tigger, uh, he just comes bouncing along. They're wondering, what's that noise? You know, he's bouncing along. And as we know, or maybe you don't remember, but Pooh is always about eating. He always wants to eat. His favorite time to eat is, is, is around 11 o'clock, which is very convenient. It's his clock is broken at five minutes to 11. So he's always ready to eat, right? So everywhere he goes, in fact, he only goes to visit his friends when he thinks it's time to get something to eat. And so once they, when Piglet and, t and, and Pooh run into Tigger, it's of course time to get something to eat. And and that means it's time to go visit a friend. So they're asking Tigger, what do you like to eat? And Tigger says, oh, I, 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 I think I like to eat what you like to eat. And Pooh Bear says, I like to eat honey. Let's go to my house and eat honey. So they go to Pooh's house and they go to eat some honey and Tigger sticks his hand in and he takes him out and he goes, Ugh, I hate honey. He says, oh, okay, well, what do you think you like to eat? Because Piglet says, I like to eat haycorns. Tigger says, oh, I love haycorns. Haycorns are Tigger's favorite food. So we, they, they call acorns haycorns in the story, right? So they go over to Tigger's house, to a Piglet's house, and of course they eat some haycorns, and Tigger takes a bite and goes, oh, I hate haycorns. So now they're going to find Eeyore. Let's go to Eeyore's house. And, and well, what does Eeyore eat, uh, Pig, Tigger says. And, and, and Piglet says, Eeyore eats thistles. Oh, I love thistles. Tiggers love thistles. He loves to talk about himself in third person. So, of course, you know what happens. They go over to Eeyore's place to have a tigger, a, a, a tissel, thistle, and a tissel. <laughs> it's a lot of T's in this stuff. <laughs> and, of course, he absolutely hates them. Tiggers hate thistles. But finally, they get over to Kanga's house, and apparently, he's into malt. Tigger likes malt, a good beer with a nice head on it. No. <laughs> so yeah, they finally find something. But it's interesting because he had to suffer the consequences of his choosing. He believed that he liked everything, which is great, but then he found out that he only liked certain things. And I think that's about what happens for us too as we go through life. We believe that we might like a situation, but once we experience that situation, we go, mm, maybe not. And that's where choice comes back into the game because then we get to make another cho choice. Remember, every moment, every second, every day, we get to make another choice but we do have to experience the consequences of the, of the choices we make. Like the day that Ruse said, I'd like to see what's at the top of that tree. And Tigger says, of course, because he loves everything, Tiggers love to climb trees. So get on back and Rue gets on his back and they climb up to the tree and they get up to the top of the tree and Rue is loving everything he can see across the 100 acre wood, but Tigger's realizing that Tiggers only like to climb up trees, <laughs> not down. <laughs> 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 you must, you must experience the consequences of your choosing. <laughs> As I go through the stories again and again and listen to them, I'm listening to them on Audible, I love Audible, it's so fun, because they got all the different voices. What came to me is that they're telling these stories of our lives over and over again. 
which is very much a midrashic kind of way of doing things. The midrash is the Jewish way of interpreting the Bible, of looking at the stories and taking the Old Testament stories from the, from the Torah and moving them through and looking how this story of David reply, or how this story of Elijah uh, might work with this story of Eliah and, and, and just seeing how all of these different things come together. And so Pooh is kind of like that, giving this interpretation of different stories of creation, of ideas, of choice. Which brought me back to thinking about the original story, our original story, our Christian and Jewish original story of choice. The Garden of Eden. Here we are in the Garden of Eden. How sweet, how wonderful. It's kind of like being like prenatal life. It's all taken care of. You're carried around and the food just comes delivered to you and everything's just lovely and they sing to you. And Eden was like that. Everything you needed was taken care of. You know, you hadn't really been born into the human experience yet. All that you ever wanted was yours, right? Until you decided to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And in some Christian interpretations, that is a story of original sin. Don't eat that, and they ate it, and you sinned, you made a mistake. But in the new thought metaphysical interpretation of that story, what we see here is something else. When you're living in Eden, living in wholeness, living in the bliss that there is nothing you need to even make a choice about, you're not having the human experience. You're having a choiceless experience. It's not until you taste of the fruit of good and evil, until you taste the fruit of duality, having a choice between this and that, up and down, left and right, yes and no, then you are launched into the human experience. Then you're able to go out and explore and do what God designed us to do. I should create a, a, a being in our image to have choice and volition, to make these choices in the world. That's the great story. And that also helps to explain, when we understand that story more fully, it helps to explain sorrow and suffering and pain, the kind of things that happened in Pittsburgh, the kinds of things that happened in Lexington, Kentucky, the kinds of things that are happening as people are crossing parts of our Central and Southern American, uh, Central American borders on their way north. and the kind of rhetoric that's being talked around all of that and the confusion that it creates for some of us as we look at those stories. It's the story of choice. It's the story of good and evil, left and right, up and down, yes and no, and the opportunity to make a change in that choice every way. It's part of our path to individuality. Dr. Holmes says that <coughs> man must be let alone to discover himself, woman, all of us, left alone to discover ourselves, else be compelled arbitrarily to follow one road, in which case we would be an automaton and not an individual. In order to be individualized, we must have the launching out of the Garden of Eden. We must taste of the fruit of good and evil. We must understand duality and have the experience of duality so that we can have individualized lives, so that we're not automatons. We must make choices but we also are left alone to make a great discovery. And that great discovery is the union of humanity, the union of each other as brother and sister living on the planet together as an experience and an expression of the one divine presence that is love, that is peace, that is joy, that is harmony. So yes, we're launched out to make this discovery, but the whole idea of religion, of yoking, of yoga, is to bond back together. The whole journey is to go out and to come back and find that we're just one all together here. So that's what we're all about. And as we do that, we lift ourselves and we lift the tide of the entire planet. We become a healing balm instead of a destructive balm. But we must make these individualized choices to know what is right and what is wrong. And you feel it in your heart. It's not an easy choice to make. I mean, despite what Wall Street is trying to tell us about the stock market and the gross national product and the uh, domestic output and the GDP and all the other numbers that we look at on a regular basis, including our own bank accounts, you know, despite what Wall Street is, I mean, what Mar Madison Avenue is telling us that we need to buy, especially as we get into the season of Christmas, which started on July 14th, um, <laughs> you know. Right? It's just right. I mean, it's been, it's been in the store right after the 4th. It was already out there. I mean, it's like they had to move Christmas aside to have Halloween. It was just amazing, <laughs> you know? So we're being told constantly what to buy, how to be, what to think. But remember this. We're individuals. 
individualized expressions of the only thing that is. And in our hearts, we know the truth. When we get still, we get still, we recognize that we are part of the one mind. That yes, there are two ways to use the one mind, one positive, one negative, but when we get still and know and touch into our feelings, we figure out that life is good. That the host that brings us life, which is God, which is the planet, that we are one with that. The receiver and the received is the same thing. One, one, one. Dr. Holmes says that spirit is all that I am. And in the Science of Mind textbook, he put it in italics. It's important. Spirit is all that I am. Divine wisdom is in my thought, causing me to act and move intelligently, to make right choices and to follow right pursuits. How do I know what's right? How do I know what's the right choice, the right pursuit? Because there's spirit within me. There's divine wisdom within each and every one of us. So slow down. Take a minute. Right after service, Johanna and I, we're going to go to the beach and just walk and slow down and take a minute to just be present with the beauty that is life itself. To, to, to just breathe it in like we do in the three-minute gap. But sometimes you need more than a gap. You know, we need to, to remember Gary's song to say thank you for the creation that we are and that we get to love with each and every one of us. And when we get into that, that serious feeling space, we find our way home. Pooh and Piglet, <laughs> they're walking, and they're, 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 Pooh is walking around this tree. And as he walks around the tree in a circle around a group of trees, he realizes he comes back around, oh, there are tracks. So he starts to follow the tracks. <laughs> and then Piglet comes along and says, what are you doing? I'm I'm following some tracks. I think it's a woozle. A woozle? Oh my God. Now Piglet's walking along him and they get back around. He goes, Pookie says, look, look, something has joined the woozle. <laughs> and they're walking along and they keep going, you know. And then all of a sudden they hear this <laughs> giggly sound. Like, it's a woozle. What is it? It's Christopher Robin up in the tree. He's laughing because he has seen them do this. And he goes, no, you're not following a woozle. Look, look, you're following yourselves. Pooh goes, no, it's a woozle. Try it. Pooh puts his paw print in the footprints. <gasps> I think it is I. <laughs> <laughs> After they've done this for a bit, Pooh's thinking he's hungry, but he's been walking in circles for so long he doesn't know where he is. I don't know which way home is. What does he do? It's, I love this. He decides to get still. He says, there's honey at home and I'm hungry. If I listen carefully, the honey will call me home. <laughs> if we listen carefully, the honey will call us home. We will know where to go. It's really sweet that there's ongoing choosing all the time, that we can never stop the choice. We're always a choice. And life supports us in that. Duality is about that. The reason we have options is to remind us that we are individuals. The reason we have options is to remind us that we are to choose. And the reason time keeps marching on, and sometimes backwards. How many got, did you do it, right? You're all here on time, yay. <laughs> but this duality and supports and it enhances life. It's a good thing to have positive and negative, to have good and bad, to have right and wrong. Don't get all fretted up about it. The world has been here a long time and there have been a lot of bad things happen and a lot more good things happen because the world is still here. I am an optimist. I think there's value in perspective. There's value in thinking, what's for breakfast? What's exciting to happen today? I think it's the same thing. In a book called Living Without Fear, Dr. Holmes says, the whole meaning of experience is to promote one's individuality and thus to provide a fuller channel for the expression of the supreme spirit of the universe. Our individuality is designed so that the universe can move forward in time and have an elevated experience each and every day. That's what we're here to do. We're here to live a Pooh Bear life. In the long range, good wins out. We're on a soul adventure and that soul adventure requires us to make choices but there's something magical that's happening by means of each and every one of us. 
as we have the experience of life in our own individual hundred acre wood, which is really the same wood, the same life, the same experience. So I ask you, what you having for breakfast? I hope it's honey, and so it is. So let's do our affirmation. Are you ready? Nice and loud, here we go. My choices each day deepen my experience of good in this thing called life and carry the potential to raise the tide for humankind and the great mother that is our host. Yes. It is now prayer time. It's good to see so many of you. Ah, exciting times. Lots of choices to make. If you're ready to make a new choice, or to anchor a choice that you've already made, or to deepen in an experience that you know is bringing more harmony, more peace, more joy to yourself or to someone else, this is the time that we pray together and make that choice a reality in their lives. So I ask you to search your heart, do that feeling tone, go into that feeling space, and allow the experience, the condition, the name of someone to come forth into the room, bring it into vibration, and then we will release that into the law. I open the room now for community prayer. That was a beautiful wave of love. The wave of spirit. Feeling the energy of the divine in this room and the consciousness collected together to know that good is unfolding in life. We take this moment and this time to make a divine choice, to step into that deep wisdom of inner knowing, to allow an experience to move forward in the lives of those that we hold dear in our hearts and minds at this moment for that expression of good to flow forth bringing forth harmony and right action, divine peace and love, healing of emotions, the softening of grief, the opening of the heart, the peace that not only passes all understanding but also squashes that thing called hate to allow it to burn up into the bright light of spirit never to return again. We send a blessing now out to our political leaders I send a blessing to each and every citizen of this country and those that are desiring citizenship, knowing that whether, whatever country you are, we are citizens of the world. We are citizens of the universe. We're individualized expressions of God. Therefore, good is at our heart, good is at our center, and we not allow through this word that good to be expressed by means of each and every one of us. So we stand strong in our choices. We know that we are living the right life with the right pursuits that bring more love, more peace, more wholeness to each and every entity on the planet. I was going to say people, but no, every entity, be it person or place, plant, animal, thing, molecule of water, whatever. Right now, we bring it the the infusion of spiritual love and dynamism. If you're feeling the gratitude for this movement in prayer, if you're knowing that there is a law that's making these words real, affirm this with me now in deep gratitude as we say together, and so it is.